Welcome back to Go Fund This, the podcast where you find out about the coolest crowdfunding campaigns out there that you want to know about. I'm your host, Rob Southgate. Today, I'm joined by Tilo Graff and Claire Strickland to discuss the Kickstarter campaign they are currently running for AAW Games' Mini Dungeon Tome. Here are Tilo and Claire. Tilo, Claire, thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited to talk to you. To get things going, why don't we have you introduce yourselves, talk a little bit about yourselves, how you got into this industry, and I want to hear about your gaming company. Um, so my name is Tilo Graf. Um, I have been a long time role player since uh, since my uh, earliest childhood, essentially. And um, at one point, I really got into um, reviewing and doing some uh, freelance design. And uh, Jonathan G. Nelson of AW Games, our fearless commander in chief, brought me on board as uh, the lead developer and editor in chief. For AW Games, I'm also a published author for a variety of different uh, third-party publishers. I also wrote for um, a little bit for Paizo and other companies. And um, my last big book was The Survival of to Spelunking, which I wrote with uh, the help of Stephen Yeardley and uh, also with fiction from none other than Douglas Niles, the original author of the Dungeoneer Survival Guide. And, um, yeah, so, um, that, that's essentially how I ended up, uh, as a super abbreviated version where I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. How about you, Claire? Well, thanks for having us on, Rob, in the first place. I'm, uh, happy to be here. I am just an author, but I have a great deal of fun with adventureaweek.com. Uh, I have four or five mini dungeons in the upcoming mini dungeon tome, which is what we're, uh, or mostly on here plugging, but uh, AW gave me my start in game design. They uh, had an open call. They let uh, people who had a vested interest, who were longtime dungeon masters and game masters, come on and give it a shot. And uh, well, Tilo has been my editor for some few years now, and I largely have this uh, this outfit to thank for my academic success. I'm going for a PhD this semester. Oh, uh, ooh, of, I love uh, that. Oh, I don't. I'm very tired, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with any with any luck, I'll be able to defend this uh this semester. And uh because it's a digital media PhD, I can be Dr. DM after that. But uh nice. it has been a great deal of fun getting to talk about the games I love in an academic context. So they speak back and forth to each other all the time. Ah, I love it. You know, actually, when I got my MBA, I did my uh my final thesis on the business of podcasting. So I get to say I to my knowledge, I'm the only person with an MBA in podcasting. Nice. Yeah, Expertise so, right here. That's right. And I, I love it. I love that you're going for it. So even though we're going to talk about the gaming stuff, I want the entire audience to throw their love and 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 like positive attitudes towards Claire to get that PhD and to, to defend that dissertation. Uh, because come on, how cool Dr. DM. I'm, I'm is. so tired, Rob. I'm so tired. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. One of my original co-hosts on one of our podcasts, uh, who's a great friend of mine forever, right? Like my best friend forever. He ended up getting his PhD while we were doing our our show. He ended up going back and getting his PhD in jazz performance. And uh, yeah, he's an amazing, amazing trumpet player, amazing jazz performer, but he ended up doing that. So I feel you. He had to drop out of the show because it was like, at some point he goes, I, I, I need to sleep like at least three hours a night. It's like, yeah, I I love, I love what I do, but oh my God, like trying to have an active hobbyist practice. I, I love these games. I, hell, I'm getting a PhD in them, Uh, but then all (laughs) my games are on pause so that I can write about them. It's very frustrating. Yeah, I understand. So let's let's talk about the Kickstarter. We're going to go there first. Uh, so the Kickstarter that we're talking about, it's the Mini Dungeon Tome. Uh, it Let's get all the details here. Here we go. It uh, has, at this moment, 16 days to go. So by the time this airs, it'll probably be 15 days to go. But uh, if you don't uh, know how many days in reality – Go to their Kickstarter and look. It's kickstarter.com, as always, and you're looking for Adventure a Week, or you can type in Mini Dungeon Tome, or, even easier, 
follow the show notes. I put all the links in the show notes. It should be attached to any social media as well. So there we got that part of it out of the way. Uh, your goal was $2,000. Is that correct? I'm not sure if you're going to hit it. Oh, wait a minute. You're at $41,613. So when we start talking about Kickstarters and the risk involved, uh, this is called zero risk. This is happening. But wow, that's a lot of support. This is an awesome looking game. Can you tell us about this? It's it's for Pathfinder, right? It's for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, um, which is a game that's uh, gotten more popular uh over the last couple of years and has seen more and more support. And one of, one of the things that um, Pathfinder 2 as a system has that uh, other systems don't have to this extent is that level, levels matter a lot. Uh, so, so uh, if, for example, your adventurers are like a couple of uh, hundred XP or a couple of thousand XP or something like that, short of the new level, right? Um, that obviously ma makes a lot of difference and uh, can can be problematic for the game. And mini dungeons uh, are a super easy solution to that. You just plug one of those easy to integrate uh, setting agnostic adventures right into the middle of your campaign between um, different adventures and have the adventures gain additional XP and you know progress to the level that they're supposed to be in the campaign. So. I, I think I, I think Pathfinder Second Edition and the Mini Dungeon uh, approach are an excellent fit for each other. Well, and this Mini Tome reason. has a hundred and ten short adventures in it. I wanted to make sure people heard how many. I mean, this is this is quite an undertaking. There's a lot of chance here to get some experience. I'm sorry, Claire, I cut you off. Oh, not to worry. Uh, part of the reason that uh, I think this thing funded so quickly and that we wound up doing well with it, it this is the third time we've done this book. It was, uh, it's out for uh, 5e, it's out for a Pathfinder first edition. But uh, like Tilo was saying, there are specific challenges in updating some of this older content and making it work with the stricter leveling progression that you find in Pathfinder 2e. So, so much of the work of this is rejiggering what were good ideas in the first place, but making the work in the context of a new system. And that's its own special game design challenge that's been a lot of fun to, uh, to new away. I do want to highlight here that the uh, I'm looking through the Kickstarter. the The artwork on here is fantastic. Uh, it makes me want to pick this up immediately, and that is saying a lot. That is really, really great. I mean, this is this is beautiful. You've got PDF on here. Uh, is am I reading? Is there a hard back? Yeah, there's a hard cover and a PDF oh, yeah. edition here. So why don't we jump into that? What are some of the tiers? What are ones that you want to highlight? Um, so, so personally, I'm totally old school when it comes to that sort of stuff. Either, um, I play on VTTs or I have my, um, big hardcover. And one of the reasons I love doing those Kickstarters for our big books is that AW Games does not do, um, print on demand or something like that. We do offset printing. And if you take a look at the backer goals, you'll see that we'll have not one, not two, not three, uh, but three uh, book ribbons and uh, increased quality paper, uh, increased color um, quality. So um, if, if you've seen any of our books in print, they are properly bound. They are not just glued together. Um, they are really gorgeous. Uh, the colors really pop. The paper is uh, high quality and so on. So as a kind of bibliophile comes comes with the territory I I, I think of being in academia. Uh, you, you, I, I just want this artifact, you know, the, this gorgeous artifact. So, so personally, um, I'd go for the hardcover pledge. Um, BTTs obviously also coming, but those will happen after the Kickstarter because we did not want to, you know, cause undue delays or something like that. Um, so the the focus right now is getting the books printed and everything. In modern gaming, you can run this stuff off of the PDF really straightforward. You can throw it straight into your VTT and, uh, you know, you can go to town. But the reason that I love uh, the hardcover uh, pledge level, the reason that I like having the physical book is the facing page. All of these dungeons are mapped. Plus text about uh, the shorter ones, most of them, about two pages. 
So you can have the, everything you need to know open right in front of you for physical browse. And that makes it a, a cinch to run, which is uh, you know my favorite way to do this. I don't have to go browsing back and forth yeah, right, 50 right. different tabs. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. Uh, and actually, I want to I want to highlight that the hardcover with the PDF you can get uh, the pledge is forty nine dollars. I mean, come on, getting a nice hardcover hardbound edition of this for forty nine dollars right there. It's like, hey, that's that's actually what I might pay, but I'm actually supporting the Kickstarter. This is a way to go. Um, I also want to point out that you have a soundtrack to it, which is one of my favorite things. Uh, when 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 companies do that, when they add the soundtrack to add that ambiance, I absolutely go crazy for that and this looks so cool just looking at the tracks and everything i'm like yeah i would totally totally do it just to get this soundtrack so cool now when you do the soundtracks how does that work do you have uh, a team that you work with for that are you just piecing it together from uh pre-recorded stuff how do you do that um we we actually have uh artists that compose the soundtracks for us um, in this instance, if I recall correctly, it was Sono Village. And uh, all of those tracks are original pieces. They are not cobbled together from uh, any other sources or things like that. They loop. So you can uh, use them as, you know, background music. And um, obviously, every soundtrack that we offer for our products, we try to have those for all of our big products, by the way, um, is different. So, for example, for the mini dungeon tome, we have, uh, for example, um, an Arctic ambiance track, an Arctic exploration track, and an Arctic combat track. Yeah. Um, we have that for pretty much all of the different terrains. If uh, our in our previous uh, product, uh, Roadmark, for example, we have specific tracks for specific boss encounters or specific environments and stuff like that. And we uh, want to essentially continue that with uh, all of our future products wherever possible, because I think that essentially the, those tracks add a whole bunch of, uh, you know, value to the game and as someone who loves music, uh, I know Claire does as well. Um, I'm, I'm incredibly excited about that. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, it, for I, myself as a as a game master, I am lazy as much as I love music, and I I love when I can have the dungeon ambience and uh, have the correct. Oh, it's a sewer dungeon, so I need the dripping water more than right, the it's right there, wings. right? It's so easy to just grab the thing. It's like, oh, it's it's this is the correct soundtrack. I don't have to waste a bunch of my prep time thinking about it and hunting for the perfect track. So this is going to sound like a weird question, and I don't know how you're going to answer this, but are there any specific adventures in here that you just are in love with that you want to highlight? One of the reasons uh, that, that I wanted uh, to be right here with Claire is she single-handedly wrote um, pretty much several if not all of my favorite adventures um in this uh particular book um I love she, my is, editor. she 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 is incredibly talented and she has um this thing that is kind of a leitmotif our our central tenet in aw games namely color outside of the lines um do, do something creative and one one of my favorites of hers was apparatus of the brachimoth which is about this coastal town uh, that has all these mages and stuff like that. And there's this one disgruntled dude who uh, manages to trick an elder water elemental into powering what essentially amounts to a gigantic um, magi tech, uh, semi aquatic uh, siege crab mecha. And this thing is attacking the town. And the mini dungeon is all about getting into this gigantic apparatus and stopping this dude and perhaps negotiating a peace with the elemental creature. And um, in Pathfinder 2, we actually also have stats for that apparatus. So if the GM wants the player characters to retain oh. this, uh, <laughs> this, uh, this mech-like weaponry at least for some time, that's an option. So yeah, put it in their Pathfinder that's... garage to pull out when they need it. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Well, I mean, so many of these, so many of these adventures, you, as a designer, they give you a map. You start with the map and you just get to use it as this prop to imagination. 
And there was this wonderful aquatic looking labyrinth that I got. Well, what, what could this be? Why does it have three levels? We've all heard of the apparatus of the crab, that classic Dungeons and Dragons, uh, you know, uh, cool crab tank that you can get, a magic item. What if it was huge, I thought? What would it be doing? So you just wind up building on the questions from there and inventing mad mages who want revenges upon, revenge upon the town that shunned them. I, it was the same thing with this. Uh, one of my personal favorites is uh, a little dungeon I did called the World Forge. And it's why I like the idea of the mini dungeon. It is this uh, high level when you're going from I'm a hero to I'm affecting the cosmology type of uh, setting. You're no longer just a hero, you're affecting the uh, di divine landscape of your setting. Players wind up in this pocket dimension with this uh, weird di uh, divine thing, trying to imagine, well, okay, well, uh, the world's about to end, so how do I remake it correctly? And they wind up trying to figure out how to, uh, wait a minute, what do you mean the world's ending? It, it's a premise that you can insert into a general power level of a game that can work in a lot of different campaigns. It's just generic enough that it slots neatly into existing campaigns while also having its own unique character and weird flavor. Wait, wait a minute. Why are you making practice with worlds? What do you mean our world is about to blow up? Oh, no. These are fun premises that as a GM, you can uh, basically do what I do with the maps. Here's a cool prop to play with for your imagination. Use it how you will. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. This, you guys have me so excited about this. Uh, it sounds so much fun. I have a friend who is a big Pathfinder player, wants to have parties for everybody to come and play Pathfinder. I am going to absolutely recommend he jump on this. Uh, here's the good news. He also is tied into a, uh, a website that does reviews of this kind of stuff. So that could be good, too, for you. Get, get the word out about this wonderful Kickstarter. Once again, it's Mini Dungeon Tome for Pathfinder 2E. Uh, you can look it up that way on Kickstarter. You can look it up under AAW Games uh, or just follow the links in the show notes or whatever we have on social media. Uh, I got another question for you regarding this Kickstarter. So we're at $41,613 as of right now, this moment. We've got 754 backers, nice, healthy amount of backers. As I scroll through and I look at your stretch goals and your backer goals, I see that you've unlocked literally everything. So have you got some that are going to be coming down the pike? Cause we got 16 days left. We got some, some hidden secrets coming. Um, what, so, what are we allowed uh, to talk about Tilo? Yeah. Uh, so, so to be, to be honest, uh, we've been absolutely overwhelmed by the um, positive response of the Pathfinder two community. And it's inc incredibly humbling and absolutely amazing um seriously thank you so much to the entire community it's an absolute honor and a blast um and we're working on it um frankly so stuff is coming stuff is on the horizon we don't have to give any secrets away here yeah yeah exactly um so we we are working on this but uh one thing i can already say at this point pathfinder 2 community as a huge thank you for this resounding response and for all the kindness, um, you won't have seen the last uh, uh, from us. Um, we have more in the pipeline for you. Seriously, Ab absolutely humbling. Thank you so much. And thank you for being on. The best of luck with this. I mean, you've already hit it, but I, I see the sky's the limit on this. I think you can more than double the amount that's come in here. I, I encourage everybody. If you're into Pathfinder, if if you're into tabletop gaming, this is a book you want to get. This is a uh, Kickstarter you want to support. And also, I, I'm a broken record with this. I say it all the time. Share it on your social media. Tell your friends because you don't know who's out there. You don't know who would be like over the moon over this thing. Even if you're not a Pathfinder player, your buddy might be. Like I mentioned, my buddy Bill, he's going to see this and go crazy. So absolutely share it where you can even if you can't pledge but if you can pledge also that helps too we want to support this amazing game company thank you guys thanks for having us on thank you so much i love this project the kickstarter for mini dungeon tome by aw games ends on march 2nd at 11 a.m so don't wait on this you don't want to miss your chance to support this project 
Thanks again to Tilo and Claire for coming on the show and sharing this with us. If you or anyone you know has a crowdfunding effort about to launch or currently going, send them our way. We love to share cool projects and to help people reach their goals. You can connect with me through the GoFund This Podcast Facebook page or via email directly to rob at smgpods.com. You can find a link to this Kickstarter and any links we discussed in the show notes. GoFund This was a production of Southgate Media Group, hosted, edited, and produced by me, Rob Southgate. Thanks for listening to GoFund This.